If you've ever said, follow me, I'm looking for gems, or if you've ever seen a sign saying falling rocks and you've waited, go ahead and click that like and subscribe button. Welcome to this series on learning to facet. In this series, I'll be taking you through all the steps from taking a piece of rough all the way to a polished gem. In this video, first I'm gonna talk about how to select a piece of rough. Then I'm gonna show you how to attach that piece of rough to a dop, the process called dopping. And then finally, we're gonna take that dopped stone and preform it into a round cylinder. All right, let's get to it. When choosing your first stone, I would recommend, definitely recommend taking a piece of quartz like this. This is a particularly clear piece. You can see there's some fractures in the middle, but all this stuff over here, that's all, it's all very clear. You can't see any veils or cracks or flaws in it by, by your naked eyes. If I was gonna use this piece, what I would do is cut cut around these floors and just use this, this piece in the middle. I already have a piece of very clear uh, quartz stone. This is a standard round brilliant. It's really very, actually really, really pretty. But I don't want another one exactly the same. So what I'm going to do is take this little piece here, which is a little bit um, off-white, it's like a, a sort of a, a pale yellow. Hopefully I'll still get all those wonderful little colors in there, but it'll be on a background of yellow, so maybe that'll be a bit more interesting. If I ever do this again, uh, I guess I'll cut a slightly different color. You know, they're not worth anything, but it'd be pretty to have a, a colored set. So here's another example of something that's a little bit darker. If you don't want to cut quartz, uh, for your beginning stone, I would recommend something inexpensive and synthetic. You know, you're going to run into a bunch of problems, so it's better to practice on inexpensive stuff. This is a good alternative. This is synthetic corundum, synthetic sapphire. I was thinking about cutting this as well, but quartz is kind of fun, and you can't get into any trouble. Without further ado, let's get into it. So, what we're going to do is take this little piece of quartz and then glue it essentially to this metal top like so if this was a less flat i would grind a, a false table into it but i don't really care about the yield or the weight so i'm just going to eyeball it and stick it on somewhere in the middle first things first clean up the stone the idea here is you want to get all the oils off your hand on your hands off the stone so what we'll do is we're going to heat up high temperature wax, heat up the stone and we'll put it all together. So to heat up the wax, you can get fancy but this is plenty good enough. You can see it's softening up pretty quickly. Some people use super glue for this or a Loctite. Uh, I haven't tried it myself. Maybe super glue is looking really good at this point, isn't it? <laughs> All right, let's try again. Try and center it backwards and forwards and side to side. You can get the best yield out of your stone. So if you look at it end on and then side to side, you can see it's fairly well balanced up with the stone. Obviously, any off if it's uh, off center, you'll uh, you'll waste more stone material, and with a more expensive stone, you could uh, um, you'll just be throwing away money. So it's not too bad. Okay, let the wax cool for ten minutes. Now we've uh, docked the stone. The next thing we want to do before we move on to uh, 
the next step is to test the, the strength of this bond. So you want to we want to pull on the stone, but we don't want to pull on it too hard. So somewhere between uh, stronger than plucking a grape, but not maybe not quite as much as you uh, pull on your shoelaces when you tie them together. So all right, I'm pulling. Stone. If you pull too much, of course, you're going to be able to pull this stone off, but just a reasonable, reasonable test. If it does pop off, it's not the end of the world, which is the nice thing about using this high temperature wax. You can just go ahead and start again. Now we've got it fairly securely, securely docked on, we'll go and go ahead and uh, grind these edges so we can determine just how wide our stone is going to be. Okay, so all the hard stuff is done. Now what we do is we chuck up the stone, chuck up the stone in the quill, set the mast to 90 degrees, put it on a 280 grit lap, uh, set the index to freewheeling. There's a whole back mechanism towards the back of the device. Uh, just engage that latch. Once you engage that latch, the stone will be able to rotate freely. And then it's just a matter of uh, laying the stone against the lap and gently moving it back and forth. So the high points of the stone will obviously be ground down and as you rotate it with your fingers you'll be able to easily feel the parts of the stone that are out of round. So I mentioned that I wanted to cut these same size to the previous stones that I have so just make sure that I have a little bit more just make sure that the girdle is just a little bit more than what I need and we're all good. All right that just about wraps up this video thanks for now if you've gotten to this point, you're in great shape. Go ahead and meet me at the next video where we cut the modified standard round brilliant. All right, see you guys soon. Bye.